Hi YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth and I am vlogging my astrological journey. So last week uh, I discussed the Aries Libra axis and this week we're looking at Taurus Scorpio. So again, I have my notes. I have a lot of notes. It's hard to minimize them sometimes, but I will do my best to keep it uh, in bite-sized chunks. There is a lot. Um, Taurus and Scorpio. So Aries and Libra are equal and opposite, whereas Taurus and Scorpio, second and eighth house, they're similar but different. So when I talk about them today, I'll talk about the sun, the houses, the moon, the ascendant and the midheaven. But there's more of a, what's the word I'm looking for? There's more of a overlapping um, because they're so similar. Like when I discuss them, it won't be so separate. So please bear with me. I will do my best to be as concise as possible. So Taurus and Scorpio are both fixed signs. Taurus is earth, Scorpio is water. They're both feminine. Uh, Taurus is rules the second house. Did I say that already? Sorry if I did. And Scorpio rules the eighth. Um, Taurus is more sensual than dynamic. Uh, it can be slow and ponderous but it's also resilient, it's determined, it's thorough. It takes time to build its energy, but once it does, there's no stopping it. It's full speed ahead. The Scorpio sun, similar but different, in that Scorpio is slow to anger, but it's slow to cool down. Um, both signs can epitomize uh, determination, thoroughness, resilience, um, reliability, power. They're both fixed, so they're not very good at being adaptable on a moment's notice, um, but they are good at empowering situations. Um, they're like the battery behind the dynamo. One thing about them both is if you've upset them, it won't take you long to know, to find out, because they will fix you with that very penetrating stare. Uh, Taurus and Scorpio both have a lot to do with the physical. Um, Taurus very much the sensual, and Scorpio the sexual. Um, these are the archetypes that are presented for them. They both have a way of being in the background and just, you know, looking at you and just daring you, you know, to figure them out, you know. They're very good at putting out the right signals um, without actually speaking. Um, neither one of them are very good at taking the initiative, uh, particularly uh, Taurus. Taurus does have an affinity with the stomach. Good way to to keep a Taurus happy, or you know when a Taurus is happy, is they've got a full stomach. Um, don't ask Taurus to do anything if they're hungry. It's yeah, they need to feel uh, grounded and filled with substance, food of substance. Um, Scorpio's area is also the stomach, but it goes a little deeper than that. Go down about three quarters of an inch below the stomach and about two inches back. And that is where um, it's just above uh, the genital area. It's, it's where the gut instinct is. And that is um, a primal instinctual thing. And um, that is Scorpio. A wise, matured Scorpio knows that the power flows through them. Um, they can express it, but they can't own it or control it. 
Um, okay, so that is a little bit about their sun signs. I will say that the whole nature around Scorpio and Taurus, Taurus and Scorpio, sorry, um, at a lower level is around control, um, power and value. At a medium level, it is about what is true of their value and worth, of its value and worth. And at a higher level, it's finding value in oneself and becoming power filled, not powerful. Um, so that the, flow, uh, the energy flows through them and they become the conduit uh, and help to um, be a catalyst for that. Otherwise it spirals down and with the energy spiraling down, it it's, can be corrupt. Whereas when it spirals up, it's, it is a catalyst for others. So they're both very powerful signs, as you can see. Um, the second house, which is what Taurus rules, the second house in itself, uh, this is a period of from seven to 14 years. So from the first house of Aries where we're born and we're reliant on, you know, our parents, to feed us, clothe us, change our diaper, all that stuff. Uh, we move into the, the second house where from seven to 14, where the child moves into the adolescent. So it's where you learn your basic values um, for the rest of your life. Um, a lot of people think the second house is just about money, but it's a, it's a lot more than that. It is uh, what you value. It's money, assets, resources, possessions, financial uh, finances, uh, material possessions. It is anything that is of value or worth. And wealth will be very different for each person, what we value or what we see of value, we see as valuable. Um, food, money, like one person's value could be being filled in a home with love and stability and another person's value could be um, full fat bank account. They're, they're both, they're both equal, just different. Like it's whatever you choose. It's whatever you find within yourself on your journey. If you have the sun in the second, then one of your journeys is, uh, for your entire life is to find out what is of value and worth to you. And this will change as you go through life. Um, because we grow and learn, expand, experiment, feel into. So there's a lot of movement here. Now, the eighth house, the old text about the eighth house was that it was about uh, death, death and sex. But there's a lot more to it than that. It's actually about other people's values. So um, taxes. Um, mortgages, bank loans, funding, investments, stuff like that. Uh, on the deep side of it, it's um, the psychology of money. Uh, it's the psychology of the value and the worth. People, a lot of people with planets in the eighth house would uh, be seen as forensic. Um, they have great bullshit. I don't know if I can say that word on YouTube. They have great filters. Um, they're very good at working out what's going on in the background. They go deeper. They get underneath. Um, they're great investigative uh, reporters um, or private detective. They like to uncover. Um, they like to uncover and they like to bring it to the surface. Um, but they do have secrets of their own that they like to protect because they're very private. They're not, a lot of people think uh, Scorpio is secretive, but it, it's more private than that. So with the sun in your eighth house, if you have the sun in your eighth house, you're going to find that your financial systems over the course of your life can go to extremes. They can go up and down. 
and then flat line up and down flat line that's the nature of Scorpio and Taurus they're both there's extremes there especially especially with um, Scorpio but in the eighth house that's where you will you will see it because Scorpio rules the eighth house so um, the lesson of both of these signs is to be strong enough to go okay I have enough I'm gonna stop here no matter whatever it is it's it's whatever they accumulate or feel uh, that is a value and worth they're both about um, safety and security as well so that's going to make them feel different things will make them feel safe and secure as well it will be different for each moving into the moon signs now before i go any further everything that i am you know just saying and and giving you information on it's it's all general you know these are all generalities of course there's so much more to it um, especially when you get into oh sorry uh get into how it's placed in your chart and aspects to the signs or the planets um, or aspects to the planets so again just general uh, a moon in Taurus now this is a strong position in the zodiac um, people with uh, the moon in Taurus this is this is about feeling and emotions so what makes you comfortable in yourself in your body and that's what Taurus is all about it loves the physical body it, it's comfortable there um, Taurus deals with the emotional the sensual um, moon in Taurus uh, moon in Taurus you will rarely see somebody with financial um, issues they go out of their way to make sure that they um, are financially secure and safe uh, and stable um, it's common to say that a, a Taurus moon will always have food on the table clothes on their back and cash in their pocket um, they will always have everything they need if not everything they want and moon and Taurus uh, really gives appreciation to the sensual uh, things in life food beautiful art music um, things that permeate through their feelings moon in Scorpio now this is this can be a really this is some people would say a, a hard position for a moon sign. Uh, it can be very emotionally insecure and emotionally unstable uh, when driven by the needs to control, uh, to control or have control over their lives or people in their lives or situations. Um, they like to be the family matriarch or patriarch uh, not because they want to control everyone but because if they feel things they have control over their environment then they feel safe they um, those that that's the insecure side that's the I, I would say maybe undeveloped uh, moon in Scorpio on a neutral side um, moon in Scorpio are really good at stepping back and observing uh, they watch they develop their own opinion and um, when they feel safe enough um, they will voice you know how they feel what they think um, those opinions in a way um, other people will see them as um, observational but not uh, critical um, on the positive side uh, let's see here lost my place sorry on the positive side they are incredibly resourceful um, they're not they're not afraid of the 
dark, the physical dark or the metaphorical dark. Uh, it will go into the dark um, as much as it will go into the light. Uh, they're resilient. They never give up. They would rather die trying. It's, it can be a really stubborn position in the zodiac sign. Um, think of a child who has to sit down and eat their dinner. They don't like something on their plate. The parent says you're not leaving till that's cleared. They will starve. They will not eat it, and you'll end up giving up and walking away. They, they're very. They can really dig their heels in. Cross, cross a Scorpio moon if at your own peril. You just that's not something you want to do. Um, the one thing I didn't mention about the Taurus moon because it is such a positive sign is because they they epitomize the sensual and, and they they love you know all those wonderful things of life um, they can also be very emotional uh, stubborn and with that with enjoying life you know life is good I'm just gonna stay here they can become complacent and when you become complacent, then you can get in a rut. So this is one thing with the Scorp or with the Taurus moon, um, to you can watch out for. If you know someone, or you have it, or you would probably already know that about yourself. So let me have a drink here. <laughs> hmm. Moon in the second house. Um, this can reveal where and how the ego uh, goes about seeking emotional satisfaction. Um, when it comes to money, you can flip-flop. Um, you can go from frugal to frivolous. Um, but there is always in the second house a need to make sure that your bills are paid um, in order to feel safe and secure. Um, you might also hold on to people or uh, possessions um, quite tightly as well for a need of safety um, and security and vanity can be an issue sometimes with um, the moon in the second house you can be looking for admiration um, You can be looking for admiration and be dependent on others for positive feedback um, until you are able to develop your own sense of self-worth. Um, the moon and the second are not the most emotionally responsive um, people. They do hold back, they wait before expressing, um, expressing themselves. Uh, they would probably want to get to know you first before they would let you know how they really feel. And they're also um, a great collector of things. A um, little bit of a pack rack. Um, belongings, uh, material things, things around them can bring them great security, a great feeling of security. The moon in the eighth house is again it's it's it is a difficult position having the moon especially for undeveloped um, having the moon in the eighth house it's going to open you up at the emotional level it is all types of different stimuli um, people with the moon in the eighth especially when they're emotionally immature um, they think that they can have power over situations and sometimes people um, but uh, and the opposite is also true that they feel people try to have power over them or try to control them um, they can be a little bit they can get really insecure and they can get really paranoid um, they will put up shields and barriers um, to protect themselves uh, from anyone getting too emotionally close to them and as you can see, both of those are extremes. Um, 
So that's why the moon in the eighth house can be seen as a very difficult position um, to have. At a neutral level, um, they will look at everything from a slightly more detached um, view. They're not object it's not an objective um, view, it's a detached view. So um, it's more of an impersonal, impersonal perspective. They really kind of just want to know, they're looking at it going, what's going on here, you know? Um, they look at the psychology um, of what's going on, what's in the background, what's underneath. They're, they really like to go, you know, downstairs. <laughs> it's very discerning. It again has really good um, filters. And they are people born with um, moon in the eighth house are born with a broomstick in their hand. They are, um, and once they get comfortable with the fact that they are that way, that they are um, born latently psychic, if not potently psychic, um, they can learn to recognize the difference between the dark and the negative. So Moon in the Eighth will get more comfortable as they age. Um, they, some of them, most of them, most people with Moon in the Eighth um, enjoy living in the metaphoric dark. Um, they'll be like the investigative type. They like to investigate their own physiological cave. They like to go inward and go down, like get into their soul, find out what's going on um, as they age. Um, they, the more that they are able to go down inside themselves and um, look at themselves, the more they are able to help others do that. They are very good at um, investigating their own psychology and therefore are, are really good at helping others once they have, um, once they've been to hell and back, you know, they just, that, that whole transformation, but tra I don't even know that transformation, people use that word with Scorpio or Moon in the Eighth House, the transformation, but to me, the experience of that, any kind of Scorpio thing is more of a, it's a, Metamorphosis. It's it's even that it's it's so much more than just a transformation. They deal. They can really deal with their demons, and they can look at it, and then help other people to do to do the same, and know that it's safe to do so. Right. So they really can, as they age, um, inspire people to aspire. So. You can see how the second house and the eighth house are both very powerful positions, in, but in different ways. Um, the eighth house is where you start to sort of sort out your own psychology in life. The eighth house runs from the age of 49 to 56. So um, now that's a real general statement, but that can that's part of it. Um, Both of the moons in the second and the eighth house, they deal with certain in, um, intrinsic deep values based around emotional power in themselves um, and of oneself and in around the other and other people. So the ascendant, sorry I keep looking at the time. I don't have much further to go, but I find that these two signs, especially Scorpio, it, it feels like there's just a lot, it goes deeper. I mean, that's just the way it is with Scorpio, right? And Taurus as well. Um, but on the Ascendant, Taurus on the Ascendant. Uh, if you have Taurus on the Ascendant, you're seen as deliberate, slow, um, someone who has a lot of stamina, um, staying power, 
um, they don't you generally come on you don't generally come on too strong um, and you can be seen as stubborn but um, you're cautious and careful but you're determined and um, you get things done you uh, physically Tauruses can be seen as really strong and sturdy in the physical body um, lots a lot of Tauruses have a sloped here not all um, but some and then some have like this tall like small neck type physicality as well Scorpio they but the strongest physical trait they would have is a really deep penetrating stare um, the kind that says don't mess with me um, Scorpio rising um, doesn't do things half measured. Um, they like to know where they stand. Um, they do like to know, you know, like Taurus, they want to know where love's coming from, where the food's coming from. But the biggest trait for, the biggest thing for a Scorpio rising or and Scorpio is transparency. They just want you to be truthful, to be honest. Even if it's not what they want to hear, they want the truth. Don't lie to a Scorpio. You will. <sighs> so, Midheaven, that's the last one we want to talk about here. So, Taurus on the Midheaven. The world will see you as a really safe player of hands. Um, you're thorough, reliable, you're stubborn, you're self disciplined. Um, if you have somebody working for you that's a Taurus midheaven, you have to, you give them a job, but they, they have to be allowed to do it their own way and don't rush them. They don't like to be rushed or flustered, but it will be thorough and it will be complete and it will be done properly. Uh, whereas Scorpio, uh, they're the people you give a challenge to. Scorpio will, they love to take things apart and dissect them and then um, put them back together. After each piece has been like um, cleansed and examined and purified, and then they're like, let's put it all back together. Um, and when Scorpios, Scorpio Midheavens, when they do this, that's when they really um, recognize that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, Taurus, uh, Scorpio matches is matches Taurus for its thoroughness uh, and its stubbornness and Taurus is dogmatic and meticulous whereas Scorpio is more resourceful and investigative so Taurus likes to mold it um, shape it massage it get it into place and uh, Scorpio would be like okay let's take it all together or let's take it all apart let's put it all back together um, but for both, there's no stone unturned. They do both like to work alone, however. That is one thing that they prefer. So, so 28 minutes. So I'm just going to finish up with a couple things. Final words. Um, so like last week we talked about Aries, Libra. And that's the capacity for uh, innovation, action, dynamism. Um, it's projective, assertive, and dealing with relationships with self and other. Whereas with Taurus, Taurus and Scorpio, it's less about the individuals and it's more about the value systems, uh, about both personal and external. Because they're both fixed signs, it's a much stronger push. They have this much stronger per push towards resilience, determination, and thoroughness. Um, they are two very perseverant signs of the zodiac. Um, right, and they can be really, really stubborn. But with um, both Taurus and Scorpio, you won't get results fast, but you will get proper, thorough results with them. 
um, and it's only it's the real deal with them. They are both very reliable positions in the zodiac. Um, people with a lot of planets in the second and eighth house will pay attention um, to what is of value and worth. Um, so to summarize them, I would say the whole nature around Taurus and Scorpio is about security and safety. Uh, safety in oneself, uh, safety in others, um, safety in terms of materials and resources, and safety in terms of feeling empowered. Um, empowered in oneself, strong, strong enough in oneself um, that one does not need to control situations um, or people or external things. Um, and in the eighth and second, it's in the second and eighth house. It's all about the way the systems um, and schedules that we all become empowered, self-empowered. So that is a little synopsis of the second and eighth house. I did want to show you a couple of cards that from the tarot that represent um, Scorpio, Taurus and Scorpio. Now, this is the scores scores scorpio is so good at transformation metamorphosis and when you bring it into the tarot scorpio represents the death card so you could also say that um I had another card here and I've lost it. Oh, here it is. You could also say that like Pluto rules Scorpio, so I could I would I'll bring that in as well. But the in the original tarot, for the death card looks like this. Very scary, right? In a new evolved version, evolved version of the death card, we have this. And this is really interesting because this is by Chris Ann. This one is by Barbara Moore. They're both great, but I I love how I love how Chris Ann has brought forward the evolution of Scorpio. Really tapped into the essence of rebirth and that we've come from a really dark time and into a lighter a lighter time where um, it feels brighter where the light does shine in the dark whereas this feels a little more grim so the other the other part of uh, the Scorpio being Pluto that rules it would be the tower in the tarot. Now the old tower, the original, is this. Death and destruction, tearing down so you can rebuild. And then this is Chris Ann's version of the tower. What I love about these two, can you see that? The older version, both of these cards represent choice. How we deal with transformation or life. Pluto will come in and we have an option. Do we want to look at the dark and, uh, you know, embracing it and seeing what it can offer us as a beautiful magic tree falling in the forest? Or do we want to view it as being thrown from the tower? So I really love this. And I feel when we take, when we own who and what we are, um, we just get brighter. And that's Scorpio. Scorpio is very good at owning, as they age, owning who they are. And again, being really comfortable in both the dark and the light. So I just thought that is a great, great example of maybe viewing life or how we've evolved 
um, and how we've grown consciously or, or you know collectively we're expanding and seeing things in brighter brighter light so a Taurus um, is the Empress in the tarot and this is the Empress in Barbara Moore's whoops and it's beautiful too they're both bright beautiful um, each for their own reasons this Empress is just sitting in her land sitting in her home uh, appreciating loving everything that she's birthed probably birthing some more she's got water around her um, flowers everything she needs and this this Empress it has the birthing rate within her. It's this this picture is beautiful. I just I love Chris Ann's tarot deck. It speaks volumes. So that is my share today. Leave your comment. Leave any questions if you have any in the comments or suggestions. I kind of rambled fast. I hoping that I will be able to slow it down and get it more concise as time goes by. Um, but I guess, you know, I'm a work in progress. So next week, or the next video will be on the Gemini Sagittarius um, axis. So I've just completed that one. So I'm going to be um, reviewing it again, getting ready to do another video. Um, again, completely different energy um, and I'm loving it I still again loving doing it and I like I like doing the vlogging because it just re-emphasizes in my brain um, there's so much more that you could share too it's just so there's it's just so much so anyways thank you for being here thank you for your time and I will see you on my next vlog <laughs>